Hi, Sandra here from Create in Spain. Now I've made several videos on how to make polymer stamps, but I'm still getting questions on the materials that I use. So I decided to address that in a little video of its own. And then hopefully everyone will be able to understand what I'm using when I'm talking about my, uh, my process. Right, the first thing that you need is a UV lamp. Now this is a common garden cheapy UV lamp designed for doing your nails. I've never used it for that. I don't do my nails as you could probably tell. Um, but I do use it for stamp making. And yes, I've put my own little label on here. I don't make them, I don't sell them or anything. I've put this on because some sneaky little people are stealing my videos. So I'm labeling everything. Um, I use mine with only the two lamps in the top. I take the side ones out. Now, depending on what you want to do, and whether you want to continue using sachets and things like that will possibly depend on whether you want to keep four bulbs in or not. The reason I took two bulbs out and kept them out was because I find that doing a slower cure is easier to judge the timing. It's more tolerant, so it's more forgiving of any errors in timing. With stamp making, the timing will depend on the type of picture that you're doing. So if you're doing something with very fine text, it will take slightly different timings to things that are very large open areas like, I don't know, a balloon or something like that. So that's why I did that. Um, it's not a branded lamp. It's just something got off Amazon and that's it. My glass plates, these were just pieces of scrap glass that my local window fitter had. They are approximately five millimeters thick. And other than that, I know nothing about them. I mean, he cut them for me and he made the edges smooth so they'd be safe. The little um, spacers here are just little plastic bumps that you get in packets of self-adhesive bumps for furniture and doors and things like that. Um, nothing special about those. But the idea of using them is that it does mean you get a regular gap all the way across your uh, glass. And that is important. You don't want to find that one part of your stamp is thicker than the other. And this helps to stop that problem. Okay, so that's those. Now I'm often asked what I'm using to either print my images on or whatever. And I've got to tell you, I do not print my images. I cut them from vinyl. But what I do is I put my vinyl onto pieces of this. I take these out, I cut down the seams and use them as individual sheets and then I put my vinyl on them and then I kiss cut them with my silver bullet. Now, if you have um, a silhouette cameo, you can do exactly the same thing. Kiss cutting is something that involves cutting through one substance without cutting through the base substance. So I literally cut through just the vinyl and not the plastic. This is the vinyl that I use. It's matte black. It is very sticky and it hasn't got a brand on the back. Now I buy this from a local DIY store and they sell it for cutting out decals to stick on the walls. And if I peel a bit back, you can see it doesn't have a white back to it. It's black all the way through. Okay, that is pretty sticky. And here is a little piece that I've just put onto a piece of one of those dossier things. If I can actually separate it, you know, I've got to take my glasses off to see what I'm doing. If I can separate it, <laughs> I'm not sure I can get it off now. Yeah, 
does separate if I can find where the gap is. Aha, there's a gap here. Right, here we go. So you can see I'm pulling that quite hard. It is very, very strongly adhesive. And that is a good thing. Okay, you need it to be strongly adhesive. What you don't want to do is use something like the Silhouette Craft Vinyl, which isn't highly adhesive, um, because it will possibly move around too much. Now, I've got here some of the designs that I was doing this morning. And for example, here is one that I've done of an umbrella. That's the handle and that's the canopy. Now, I drew that in Concepts. And I then imported it into Shortcuts a lot. And as you can see, you have the transparent areas where it's been weeded. And if I pick up this piece of tissue, you can see that this is the bit that I weeded out. So that's actually vinyl, okay? It isn't printed on, it's cut from vinyl. Now this has been used, and as you can see, it's pristinely clean. And the reason for that is because what I've taken to doing is taking my base plate, let's move this out of the way, okay. I put my design, and this is on the plastic, this is the plastic on the back. It's one of these pieces of sheet from here okay so it it was stuck on and then it's kiss cut so that only the vinyl has been cut away the plastic is still there on the back okay that's not been cut that's still there it's still completely solid on the back now I place this design side up on my base tile and I take a piece of cling film and I put the cling film over the top, cut the excess off, and make sure that it's flat. If you don't make sure it's flat and you end up with wrinkles in your cling film, you'll end up with wrinkles in your stamp. But as you can see, that wasn't difficult to do, was it? Now this brings us to the next bit, which is the foam. <clears throat> I have a piece here somewhere. Here we go. This is your normal standard, I don't know, 1.5 or something like that, craft foam. It's the stuff you get everywhere. Here I can buy in A3 sheets, you can buy in packets, you can buy in sheets, in virtually every craft shop, um, art shop, Chinese shop, dollar store type place. You can buy it everywhere and it's cheap a sheet of this a three size uh, i think it is a three big big sheet will cost me something like 60 or 70 cents now in order to make a dam for this all i do is i cut strips of this either with my guillotine or with scissors doesn't matter which now you can either put a double-sided tape on it and then cut it, or you can cut it and you can use something like this. Now this is a permanent um, glue roller thing. And you can literally just go like that and then it will be sticky and you can stick it down on there to form your dam. So again, nothing complicated. When I have finished with my dam and I have filled my dam with gel, I take another piece of this stuff and I put it over the top. Now, why do I use this rather than cling film? Very good reason. It is reasonably sturdy and it will lie flat. What you don't want is a bumpy back to your stamp because that won't aid it in stamping properly at all. So I have my dam around here, my gel inside, I put that on top and then I take my piece of glass and I put that on the top again and that's my sandwich. That is all there is to it. 
Now, for those of you who say, well, I'd like to see you doing the whole process from start to finish, that would be great, except for the fact that my camera's in one place, I do my designing on an iPad, I then switch to my laptop to use shortcuts a lot, then I go to the machine to cut it, and then <laughs> it comes here. So I think you can understand that there are a fair few processes to go through. It doesn't take me any time at all, really. But there are a fair few things involved <laughs> in order for me to get to this stage. But, you know, I can do some fairly fine design. You can see here I've got some um, banners. I did these yesterday. So... That is pretty small print. I probably wouldn't be putting anything smaller than that on a card. This one's slightly bigger. I have somewhere or other. Oh yes, I did a design of a house. I drew a little, drew a little cottage, and I've done the windows. So the windows can be stamped separately, and I've done a different type of window here. A single window so I could do four windows instead of six and I've done a little tree with a little bird on top and I've made those into stamps what else have I got here another banner and different variations on the umbrella I wanted one that was a solid stamp and I did one with a spotty umbrella and then I've got some patterns that I did now, all of these I've made into stamps and they're fine. Um, just show you again the liquid that I'm using. It comes from Collop. And I did answer a query on the video uh, below regarding where you get it if you're in the States. And I gave a link to Collop.com. And if you go to Collop.com, they have a store locator or a supplier locator. And so you can put in your postcode and find out where you can actually get it. Um, so there we are. That's about as much as I can tell you about supplies. I hope you found that useful, that it's answered your questions. If it hasn't, comment below and let me know. But I don't think there's anything much I can tell you, really. Thanks for watching. Take care now. Bye-bye.